Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Bojiha and I work on the same big project, so I will tell more story about this project in this presentation. So uh, first, I will introduce the background, and then, uh, as Bojiha uh, has already introduced, like we have uh, two different uh, uh, model or or two different approach to implement the model in Bajik. So first, I'm going to introduce the conventional model. Uh, in section two is the mathematical model, and in section three is the numerical model. And in four section, I will introduce the novel uh, approach, and the, the last section is a summary and discussion. Okay, so first, um, uh, water waves, uh, like especially these high waves, with, uh, especially these waves uh, with high amplitude, can cause serious damage and even destruction to human lives and maritime structure. Uh, like in maritime industry, these kind of waves are really generated in wave basins or wave tanks by using wave makers so that scale, scale tests can be undertaken. However, this kind of experimental tests are really ex uh, high cost and uh, time consuming to calibrate and carry out, which invites the more economic way of numerical simulations. But on the other hand, numerical uh, experimental tests can provide some necessary validation test cases for numerical simulations. Okay, so our ultimate goal is to build a numerical wave tank where, I, uh, where it can be used by maritime sector. And here, this figure shows the numerical wave tank we considered in our search. Um, we can see that uh, uh, in this numerical wave tank, there will be a piston wave maker on the left hand boundary, and uh, we also consider the uh, non-uniform seabed topography, and it's denoted by BXY. Um, so for the, uh, fit, uh, for the wave, uh, water wave model we use, we use the potential flow model, and these governing equations can be derived from Luke's variational principle. And if we take a look at the governing equation, we can see that uh, there are few boundary conditions as well as the uh, uh, as well as the Laplace equation that governs the whole field domain. Uh, for the boundary condition, like there are uh, free two free surface boundary conditions, the uh, the dynamical boundary condition and the uh, uh, and the uh, sorry, I forgot the name. But there are two free boundary conditions for the free surface, and on the wave maker, there is also a boundary condition for the wave maker. And we can see that uh, there are two unknowns basically in this physical problem. The one is the water depth, total water depth h, and and the and the other one is the velocity potential um, phi. Um, but uh, if before we move to the numerical discretization, we can see that the physical domain is time dependent due to the motion of the wave maker as well as the free surface elevation. So before to do the uh, uh, numerical discretization, we need to first use a coordinate transformation to transform the time dependent domain into a time independent domain so that we don't need to, we can avoid uh, regeneration of mesh in the following steps. And after doing this, we can obtain the uh, transform VP. So now we have our mathematical model. The next step is to do the numerical discretization. Uh, this uh, slide shows the, how, we disc uh, how we do the special discretization. So uh, if we recall the uh, governing equations, that there are um, two free surface boundary conditions that depend on time, one for h and one for free surface velocity potential. And these two unknowns, they are all, uh, they are only dependent on the horizontal spatial coordinates x and y. And for the Laplace equation, it's not independent uh, dependent of time. So that we need to first uh, separate the free surface velocity with regard to the interior velocity potential. So, uh, we on the horizontal uh, on the on the di vertical direction, we only have one element, and we will uh, set, uh, expand the velocity potential along the vertical uh, direction by using this form, and that phi i tilde is the Lagrange polynomial. And after this uh, expansion, then in our numerical model, we will have three unknowns. 
Um, psi 1 is a, a free surface velocity potential, and this head psi is a vector. It denotes the interior velocity potential, and the last one is the total water depth, h. And after we expand the expand, uh, after we substitute the expanded phi into the transform VP, we can finally obtain our special discretized transform VP. And then, if we're taking derivative variations with respect to the three unknowns, we get three weak forms. Um, and uh, next, we apply two uh, time scaping schemes onto these three weak forms. Um, Namely, they are uh, the first order simplex Euler scheme and the second order storm overlay scheme. And uh, as uh, what I just mentioned, these kind of weak forms are very cumbersome, and uh, uh, and it's very easy to like make mistakes uh, during the deriv der derivation stage and also the implementation stage. Um, but finally, we managed to uh, like implement these weak forms into Firedrip, but explicitly. And uh, we upload our uh, code onto this GitHub uh, organization. And uh, this model is uh, validated and verified uh, against a series of test cases. But here we are focused on the experimental validation. So in this case, we are going to validate our model against uh, experimental data from an uh, open test case uh, conducted at Marine Time Research Institute Netherlands. This is where we are doing our internship. And in this test case, uh, here it shows the uh, uh, snapshots of the, of the test case. Um, so there will be a, a piston wave maker uh, on one hand and uh, on one side, and it will generate a group of waves. But due to the dispersion effect, the waves generated later will have like long wavelengths and it will travel faster so that at some time they will, uh, um, um, they will form a focused wave at T3 and after that the wave will defocusing again. Um, and then in the uh, numerical simulation we use the uh, wave maker position and velocity that measured in this uh, test case as an input to our uh, code, and uh, you can see that uh, oh, along this wave, uh, along the wave temps, there are six probes um, to uh, measure the wave elevation. And here we can see that uh, the numerical results, which are shown in blue, uh, agree well with the uh, experimental data for the six probes. Okay, then uh, as just mentioned, these uh, manually derived uh, weak forms, they are very long and uh, uh, they are prone to human mistakes. So uh, uh, the, the next part we are going to, um, let's invite the idea of the automated generation of weak formulations. And we are going to apply it in, a, in the two solid interaction test case. So. Uh, these two soliton interaction can be seen in nature and can also be described by a KP equation. Um, uh, the good news for this equation is that it has, uh, 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 this equation can be seen as the uh, simplified version of potential flow equation after some assumption. And the good news about this equation is uh, that it has well-known uh, exact solution of uh, soliton in interaction. And for two solid interaction, uh, uh, the maximum uh, amplitude of the intersecting rule, uh, zone is uh, four times of the uh, far field amplitude, uh, as shown in uh, this figure. So uh, basically, we what we want to ask like whether this uh, force forceful amplification factor can be also achieved in the potential flow system, so that we initialize our potential flow system with the uh, exact solution of the KPE. However, there's also a problem that this kind of solutions, they are only hold for uh, infinite plan, but not for this confined plan, so that we need to use periodic boundary condition in this simulation. Um, 
But we can see that for the uh, free surface elevation eta, um, it is symmetric. But for the velocity potential phi, it is not. So which is not ready for the periodic uh, boundary condition. So before um, moving to the next step, we are going to first split the velocity potential into two parts. The first part, phi tilde, is the periodic part. And uh, it also has uh, another background part. And the background part can be calculated by using the uh, periodic uh, requirement for this uh, boundary. That is, uh, the uh, tilde at the left boundary should be equal to the tilde at the right boundary. And then uh, u naught and c naught can be solved. So uh, we are ready uh, for the initialization st stage. And the step two and step three is almost the same uh, for the um, for the traditional approach. Um, but for step three, we use a different uh, part partition of free surface and the interior part of the velocity potential. And here, uh, this uh, psi is the free surface velocity potential, and this var phi is the interior part. And uh, hat phi z uh, is the arbitrary function that. Uh, but it should need to be satisfied uh, this uh, restriction so that psi, uh, so that var phi will be, uh, and also var phi should have, a, we need to impose a Dirichlet boundary condition on var phi so that it satisfies uh, this restriction. And then uh, psi will be the uh, free surface velocity potential and var phi will be the interior one. And, uh, uh, then until this step, we get we still have the uh, time continuous uh, VP, and uh, the last step is to uh, rewrite this VP into a time time discretized uh, version, so that we can apply the uh, derivative functionality of of Drake, so to derive the um, weak forms automatically. So to just uh, like give you an impression of this uh, complica complicated VP I showed it here. And uh, this is the time discretized VP uh, corresponding to the modified uh, midpoint scheme. And uh, uh, um, uh, this work is uh, done with the help of Colin. And he uh, helped us to propose this uh, mid modified midpoint scheme. Mm, and here we have uh, like three unknowns. It's psi, which is the free surface velocity, and var phi, interior velocity, and also h, the uh, total water depth. And I show the code here. Uh, basically, uh, we need to, uh, we use a extruded mesh, which is generated based on a two D periodic mesh. Then based on the two uh, based on the 3D mesh, we generate our function space. Um, because for the psi and for the h, it is only uh, uh, dependent on x, x and y. So uh, here we use this vr as the uh, function space. And uh, then we can directly uh, type the uh, time discretized vp into this part, and then use a derivative to generate the weak forms for for the three unknowns respectively, and uh, we also need we also need to replace uh, the uh, the uh, the variable at the n plus one time stage uh, with the uh, previous like to implement this relationship in the code, and then we can obtain the <coughs> full weak form for this problem, and then we construct a a, a server. And in the time loop, we just solve these uh, three unknowns simultaneously, and uh, also update uh, to tr uh, update the the variables. So that by doing this, uh, we can see that the weak forms are generated automatically and implemented implicitly, but not explicitly pre previously. And we did four test cases for these uh, two solid interactions. And uh, we use CG2 and CG4. And for CG2, uh, we use three uh, different time resolutions. And uh, uh, first, let's take a look at the performance of this uh, four test case. And we monitor the energy of the system, and it's shown in the figure. And if we do some rescale, 
uh, we can see that for CG2, the three lines uh, are more close to each other. Uh, so that we can uh, verify that this uh, modified midpoint scheme has two uh, has second order convert order of convergence um, in time. And then um, this is the results for the uh, maximum uh, ampli amplification over uh, the far field amplitude. Uh, uh, before that, we can take a look at uh, figure 3. It shows that uh, the uh, solution appears to be periodic in x direction. And finally, as I just mentioned, the maximum amplification factor is 4 in the KP equation. And here, like we, um, the uh, amplification factor is, um, is around 4. So that, uh, which means that uh, this uh, um, theoretical four-fold amplification can also be achieved in a potential flow model. Okay, uh, so basically in this study, we provide a computational tool to simulating 3D nonlinear waves. And the analysis is based on fully nonlinear potential flow water, flow, uh, water wave model. And the numeric, numerics are conducted through a consistent space-time variation dissipation implemented in Fiatric. And, uh, and because we use potential flow uh, model so that it can't um, uh, deal with the, the, the scenario where wave break happens. So to achieve, uh, to address this change, uh, we plan to add a viscous damping term to the free, to free surface boundary conditions locally around the breaking region so that uh, we can um, deal with this wave breaking in cases. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Questions? Is the the, the uh, can you go back to the graph, the blue one, the, the, the last one, plot, yeah, here. It, so is this, um, yeah, what, so what, what is the initial condition for this uh, problem? How does it start? Uh, the initial condition is like this. Uh, so uh, this uh, this one is the initial condition for H, and uh, this one is the initial condition for this phi tilde. Right. So, and, yeah. and then what happens at later times? Is it, uh, it move? Yeah, yeah. It just moves uh, uh, in the x direction, and because it is a uh, periodic boundary uh, condition, so that uh, it will move out of out from the right one and come coming from the left one. Okay, so when, when, when you're talking about the maximum amplification, is that, what, what, is, what is being amplified? Which that uh, uh, because like here you can see, uh, like these, these two are the um, far field soliton, two far yeah. field soliton, and this, this region is your interaction region, and in this region the amplitude is uh, higher than their far field amplitude. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, uh, it's like the uh, the the KP solution uh, shows that it's four oh. times higher than the far field amplitude. Okay, the thing I'm confused about is you put that in as an initial condition, so I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I can I can choose any value, can't I? Because I just set a different initial condition. Yes. Or is, or is yes. It, it doesn't uh, doesn't behave like a soliton unless you choose the right number, is that? Uh, so, uh, like we. Uh, uh, we choose this uh, uh, case uh, in purpose because we want to uh, to see whether the uh, maximum amplification can be or can also be achieved in this potential flow model. And uh, there is also a maximum ampli amplification factor in three soliton interaction. Right, but um, the reason I'm confused is because you say achieve the maximum amplification, but you're putting it in as the initial condition, aren't you? So uh, uh, then it should be like maintained. Oh, I see, right. Yeah. In, yeah, in this case, it's like... So what happens is that if you choose the right value, then the whole thing just moves to the right, and if you choose the wrong value, it breaks up or something. Is that I right? choose the, if I choose the, uh, not this uh, parameter, then it will just be like, uh, like an X. It becomes so, a bit, so, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And okay. the interaction, um, the maximum ampli uh, amplitude is not four times of the far yeah. field amplitude. Okay. All right, thank you. I understand. Thank you.